In today's lesson, we're going to look at implicit differentiation. Now, implicit differentiation allows us to find the derivative of functions that are defined ex implicitly. So basically, that means functions where it's difficult or impossible to get y isolated by itself. So an implicit function is a function written in terms of both the dependent and the independent variable. Whereas an explicit function is written in terms of the independent variable. So an example of a explicit function are well, pretty much the functions we've been defining derivatives of up until now. Now an implicit function could be like um, x squared plus y squared equals one. Uh, that's the equation of a circle. You also have ellipses and hyperbolas. And an explicit, say, could be a quadratic y equals three x squared plus five x minus one. So we're learning how to deal with when we have x's and y's, especially if we have x times y together. So the process that allows us to do this is called implicit differentiation. And that allows us to find the derivatives when the function is not written in terms of y equals or um, independent variable equals. So what is the process of implicit differentiation? It's a four step process. First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to the independent variable. Then we're gonna collect all the terms with dy dx onto one side of the equation, factor out the dy dx, and then solve for dy dx. So that's how we get dy dx equals. So we use usually the dy dx notation with, Im with implicit differentiation. You'll see why that comes so important when we get to uh, related rates in our next section. So the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. Derivative of 3y is 3y squared times y. Now y is considered a function of x. You know, y equals something. We just don't know what the y equals is. So we have to times that by the derivative of y with respect to x. So it's sort of like using the chain rule. Now for the second term, on the other side of the equal line, we have 18xy. So we're going to treat 18x as our first term, y as our second term, and we're going to do the product rule. So we have the first times the derivative of the second, which is 1 times dy dx, plus the second term times by the derivative of the first, which is 18. All right, I'm going to just write this a little neater. All right, now I have two terms that have dy dx with them. So I'm going to move those two terms to the left-hand side of the equation by subtracting 18x dy dx from each side of the equation. And I'm going to move everything else onto the other side by subtracting the 3x squared. That's, I, that's getting on the terms of dy dx on the terms of myself. Now all the left-hand terms all have dy dx in common, so I'm going to factor out that, G, that um, fact, common factor. And then I'm going to divide, I'm multiplying dy dx by 3y squared minus 18x, so I'm going to divide each side by that. And then I'm going to see if I can simplify. It looks like um, 3 will go into every term. So taking out a 3 from the top leaves us a 3 times 6x minus x squared. Taking out 3 from the denominator leaves us y squared minus 6x. So our derivative is equal to 6y minus x squared divided by y squared minus 6x. And that's the answer as far as I can go. All right, now I want you to try the next one. And when you're doing it, think about this. Every time you take a derivative of the y variable, you have to times it by dy dx. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is rewrite this cosine um, squared y as cosine y quantity squared. So I know that I have a function inside of a function, so I'm gonna have to use the chain rule. Then notice that this first term, I'm gonna have to use the product rule. My first term is x squared. And then I times it by the derivative of my second term, which would be two cosine y times by the derivative of the inside function, derivative of cosine is negative sine of x, sine of y. And since I took a derivative with respect to y, I got to times that by dy dx. Now that's the first times the derivative of the second. I got to finish up the product rule with the second term, copy down, times it by the derivative of the first term. And then minus the derivative of sine, which is cosine of y. And again, I took a derivative with respect to y, so I got to times that by dy dx equals the derivative of zero is zero. Cleaning this up a little bit, I end up with the term negative 2x squared cosine y sine y dy dx plus 2x cosine squared y minus cosine y dy dx. So to get rid of the negatives, I'm going to move all of my dy dx terms onto my right-hand side this time and leave the terms that do not have dy dx on the left-hand side. And then I'm going to factor the dy dx off the, out of those two terms. And I'm left with 2x squared cosine y sine y plus cosine y all times by dy dx. Now to get dy dx by itself, I'm going to divide each side of the equation by that um, binomial. And so I have 2x cosine squared.
squared y divided by 2x squared cosine y sine y plus cosine y is equal to dy dx. I can simplify a little bit. Notice I cannot cancel out the 2 and the x because they're not common in all terms, but cosine is in all three terms, so I can factor cosine out and cancel it out. And I end up with 2x cosine y divided by 2x squared sine y plus 1. So now we know how to find the first derivative using implicit differentiation. Let's look at how you find the second derivative. So to find the second derivative, the first step, as always, is to find your first derivative. So we're just going to find the first derivative of x squared plus y squared equals 1, as we normally would do. The derivative of x squared is 2x plus the derivative of y squared, which is 2y dy dx equals the derivative of 1, which is 0. Get the term with dy dx on the side by itself by subtracting 2x from each side. Divide each side by 2y. And now we've isolated the dy dx. So all that's left to do is to simplify down. And we get dy dx is equal to negative x over y. Now that you found the first derivative, we're going to differentiate this answer to find our second derivative. And I'm going to differentiate it by using what's called the quotient rule. All right, so the second derivative of y with respect to x is equal to low d high minus high d low over low low. Clean up, we get negative y plus x dy dx over y squared. Now here's the key. This is something that new. Notice that our new equation has dy dx, but we've already defined dy dx to be negative xy. So everywhere in your second derivative, you, you see the term dy dx, you need to replace it with what you found the derivative of y to be equal to, which is negative xy in this case. And then we're going to simplify down the equation. So for the numerator um, fraction term there, I need to find a common denominator, which will be y. So I'm going to multiply that first term, negative y, by y over y. So our second derivative is equal to negative y squared over y minus x squared over y over y squared, which is just simply negative y squared minus x squared over y cubed. Because we took the y on the denom there, and then the denominator term, y squared over 1, we flipped and multiplied, you end up with 3 y's on y cubed on bottom. And that is how you found your second derivative. Okay, so we're going to find the derivative of 2x cubed minus 3y squared equals 8 by first taking the derivative of the first term using the power rule, minus the derivative of the second term, again using the power rule, but this time since I took a derivative of the y variable, I times it by dy dx, and the derivative of a constant is 0. So I'm going to isolate the dy dx term by subtracting the 6x squared from each side. And then I'm going to divide each side by negative 6y. Simplifying down, I get my derivative of y with respect to x is equal to x squared divided by y. And so since my first derivative is equal to x squared divided by y, so now that we know our first derivative is equal to x squared divided by y, we're going to differentiate this to find our second derivative. We're going to use the quotient rule. So that would be low d high minus high d low, and derivative of y is 1 dy dx over low squared. Simplify, um, Cleaning this up a little bit, our second derivative is equal to 2xy minus x squared dy dx over y squared. Recall that when you find the second derivative, everywhere in the first derivative you see the dy dx term, you replace it to what you found it equal to, which in this case is x squared divided by y. So I'm going to rewrite my second derivative. Everywhere I see dy dx, I'm going to substitute in that x squared divided by y. Now I'm going to simplify by finding a common denominator to the numerator, which is multiplying the first term by y. And then when I take a dividing by y times by y, um, 1 over y squared, that gives me a y cubed as my denominator. Okay, we're going to determine the slope of the graph of 3 times x squared plus y squared quantity squared is equal to 100xy at the point 3, 1. So we're going to start by um, finding the derivative of this function. So we find the slope of the tangent line. And so on the left-hand side, when we find the slope of this term, we're going to have to use our chain rule. So let me write this where it's a little bit more. So we have 3 times x squared plus y squared quantity squared. So I have an inside function there is equal. And then on the right-hand side, we're going to use the product rule. So our first term is going to be 10x, and our second term is going to be y. 
All right, so starting on the left-hand side, we're gonna differentiate that using our chain rule. So that becomes six x squared plus y squared leads to the first power times by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of the inside is two x plus two y, but y is a function of x, so I have to times that by dy dx. Um, the chain rule, so the first term times the derivative of the second term. All right, so I'm going to multiply each term by 6x squared on the left-hand side, everything in the second parentheses by 6x squared. And then I'm going to multiply everything by 6y squared. Because I can't solve for the, I can't isolate the terms for dy dx until I get rid of the parentheses. And so that's going to be my next step. I'm going to get every term that has dy dx on the left-hand side, and every term without dy dx, I'm moving to the other-hand side. So the 12x squared y dy dx stays, and the plus 12y squared dy dx stays. And then I'll subtract 100x dy dx from each side. And that'll equal to, on the right-hand side, I have 100y, and then minus the 12x cubed, and then minus the 12xy squared. Now on the left-hand side, every term has dy dx in common, so I'm going to factor that out and leaves us with 12x squared y plus 12y squared cubed minus 100x. I am multiplying dy dx by that 12x squared y plus 12y cubed minus 100x, so I need to divide each side by that expression. And I notice every one of these terms has a greatest common factor of 4, so I'm going to factor out the 4, just to make the number smaller and easier to work with. Therefore, our derivative of y with respect to x is equal to 25 minus 3x cubed minus 3xy squared divided by 3x squared y plus 3y squared minus 25x. Now that's the derivative with respect to x, but that's not what I asked to find. We're asked to determine the slope of the, the um, graph. Okay, so the problem asks us to find the slope of that point at this of the graph at three, two, three, one. So I need to evaluate this derivative at three, one. Here's a new notation. This is how you say I'm gonna evaluate the derivative at the point three comma one. So everywhere I see an x, I'm gonna plug in three and everywhere I see a y, I'm going to plug in 1. Simplifying down, I get 25 minus 81 minus 9 divided by 27 plus 3 minus 25, 75, or oh, 25. Oh, it should be 75. It is 75 minus 75. Up here, I should have wrote 25 times 3. So our slope of our tangent line is 13 ninths. All right, so given 9x squared plus 4y squared equals 40, I want to find the equation of the tangent line. So first, I'm going to find the slope of the tangent line. Or first, you were asked to find the slope of the tangent line. So that I do that by taking the derivative of every term. Now I need to get the term with dy dx on the side by itself. So I'm going to subtract 18x from each side. And then I'm going to divide every side by 8y. This will simplify down to negative 9x divided by 2y. 4y, sorry. Then to find our slope, we're going to evaluate this derivative at the point 2 comma 1. So evaluating the derivative of y respect to x at 2 comma 1 would give us negative 18 divided by 4, which is negative 9 halves. So that will be our slope of our tangent line. Now that I know the slope of the tangent line, I can find the equation of the tangent line by using our point-slope formula. So I get y minus 1 is equal to negative 9 halves x minus 2. Distribute the negative 9 halves to everything in the parentheses, here are the parentheses and then add one to each side. So my slope, my tangent, my equation of my tangent line is y is equal to negative um, nine halves x plus 10. Last but not least, you're, find, you're asked to find the equation of the normal line. Recall that the slope of the normal line is equal to the opposite reciprocal, the slope of the tangent line. So in this case, that would be two ninths. And I use the same point of tangency. So to find the equation of my normal line, I use my point slope formula. 
Simplify it down. And you get y is equal to 2 ninths x minus, y is equal to 2 ninths x plus 5 ninths. And that is um, how you find implicit differentiation.